What's going on, comic friends? Thank you, everyone, for joining us. <laughs> I'd just like to say and declare that uh, this meeting of the Council of X is now in session. Uh, let's go around the horn to our esteemed members here in attendance tonight. Uh, first off, we've got Eric from SideQuest Comics. We've got Josh from Sasquatch Comics. We missed him last week. He's yeah! Glad to have you aboard. Dan from Dan's X-Men Comics. Hey, hello. Chris from Cheddar Comics. Mike from Lunch Money Comics. And Brian from Big Me McFly, the comic guy. Thanks uh, for coming on, guys. Ain't no problem. Thank you. Thanks for having Good us. Be here. So we've got an exciting night of uh, discussion ahead of us. Um, if you haven't uh, seen maybe some of the little uh, previews, uh, Instagram ads for the show tonight uh we are kind of we've got a bit of a theme tonight and that theme is uh deadpool and wolverine we uh plan this to be right after the drop of uh the first trailer for deadpool and wolverine that aired yesterday during the super bowl and we're going to discuss that tonight but before we get into the discussion let's start off with another segment of Pages of X. Pages of X. Hello everybody, Mr. Akins here, and welcome to What's on the Comic Rack. Tonight I'll be reading an excerpt from the iconic X-Men number 132 from the Burn Claremont run. Let us begin. Pierce, Wingard, that's enough, both of you. As chairman of the Inner Circle, I, Sebastian Shaw, propose a toast to the Hellfire Club and our Black Queen. Long may she reign. As for our captured mutants, by the time we're finished with them, the X-Men may well wish they perished with Wolverine. Okay, suckers, you've taken your best shot. Now it's my turn. Wonderful. That is my Thank favorite you. single panel of Wolverine ever, right there. Absolutely. Exactly, exactly what I was thinking. And who better than to deliver that panel than the the, the biggest fan of John Byrne, Mr. Akins from What's on the Comic Rack. So thank you, Mr. Akins, for that uh, excerpt and reading for us tonight. Uh, let's jump into the comment section before we get into things. Uh, thank you to John from John's Comments with Kids. Uh, let's go X-Men for the win. Couldn't agree more. Got Justin from No Good Comics. Brandon Metro's in the house. Thanks for, for tuning in. Uh, we've got uh, our friend Ryan from Collecting Casually. And uh, that's it for uh, anybody other than the, the group we've got on screen here in the chat. So hopefully we'll have some more uh, people in the comments uh, coming up. So big trailer drop last night. Let's uh, before we get into the, the details of it, how, how is everybody feeling about it? How, do we do we like it? Are we hyped about it? Feel free it to was, jump in. It was pretty great to uh, to know it was coming. Before the move, uh, before the game started, because let's be fair, I didn't give, I didn't care about either <laughs> of the teams playing. I was all about this trailer, and uh, wow, just wow. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. I, I, I thought it, you know, I was, I thought it could go one of two ways. I thought it could be um, super, um, just Deadpool comedy, not really give you much, kind of almost like the, the end credit scene from the first movie where he's just playing off of Bueller and it could just be really like just a little teaser like that or it could go the way it went which was give us a lot to chew on and uh and really kind of like set the stage so I'm I'm happy it was the latter um any other thoughts preliminary thoughts on on the trailer itself they still they still left a lot to the imagination you know like the, I think yeah. some people were disappointed they didn't see Wolverine it's like it's a teaser and that's the point you know like they told us what we need to know just enough 
and they give us the tease and we're, we're waiting they, for more. They, they basically, yeah, left you wanting more. I mean, you, you see like the shadow or you see, you know, you, you can't mistake the hairdo. So right. it's like you wanted more. I, I would say I was a little surprised at the depiction of the TVA. I mean, it, it makes sense that it would be, assuming, presumably it takes times different weird works. We are there, but it's different than the one we saw on Loki. You have Matthew McFadden, you know, instead of, you know, Owen Wilson. Um, it had a different look to it, which I thought was a little interesting you know i thought it'd be exactly the same as the, the same loki set uh but it was cool it was fun to see the tva it's fun that, for them to be playing that up and having the tv show pay off uh, immediately in a, in a movie is pretty cool yeah i definitely thought it was cool that it was like kind of deadpool got the spotlight because you know when wolverine's there everyone's gonna just be talking about hugh jackman so it's like at least for the first one let's have it be deadpool let him have his moment in the sun and then kind of cap it with Wolverine, and then I'm sure the next trailer will have mm -hmm. a lot more to show. When when I had seen it, the when I had watched it the first time, I think I was it was more just like my expectations are already so high about it that I was like, it's really going to take something you know huge to to blow me away or get me more excited about it. Um, and I was kind of expecting that. And the first time I watched it, I was like, oh, that, that was great. I'm, I'm excited, but nothing. I was like, there wasn't really anything in it. But then um, you guys started, I started hearing some of you guys talking about it. And then I was like, I need to watch this again. And ended up watching like, um, what is it? Emergency Awesomes video where you guys, you guys familiar? I haven't heard about it yeah, until the robot really well to it. Okay, yeah, and and there was, I guess, so much there that I had just like totally glanced over the first time around. So, uh, you know, it, it is pretty exciting to, you know, speculate about what's what's going to happen in it and stuff. And yeah, so I'm a little more excited now. I, uh, I, I could, I was unlike Josh. I, I, I was watching the game, and I was, uh, I was a little invested. I had a little bit of money on the line, so. I uh I I want it draw and I'm also I'm in Canada and we get we don't get all the commercials um the same as US so the the teaser that said the full trailers online didn't air at the same time as it did in the US so I started get, getting messages like oh the trailers up trailers up so I had I then watched it on my phone while the football games on saw it small so it was great but like i couldn't wait for the game to end so i could like really dig in uh, into it and watch it a hundred times but of course and then of course the game goes to overtime so it's like the yeah. longest game ever in super bowl uh but uh yeah it was and, worth and you were confused with no 55 yard line i get it ryan it, it's weird four <laughs> down what are they doing i oh, actually God. can't stand canadian football but we don't have to get into that discussion tonight well you, did, um, you didn't miss out on anything for the commercials so it was like all UFO commercials. A lot of them come out before the Super Bowl, anyways. Um, but uh, I like to try to catch up on them afterwards. And I, I, I like the the Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, Duncan's commercial. That was pretty, pretty good. Anyways, if you haven't seen it, check that out. I, I um, do want to say you brought something really quick. Dan said you were a little disappointed at first, and then you started watching it. My biggest fear with this movie before the trailer is that the hype is so high on it. It is yeah. going to disappoint. There is no people are going to go come out of that theater and they're going to be bummed. And I mean, we put it in very lofty <clears throat> expectations at this point. I think it's kind of unfair. So I hopefully people temper that a little bit. Um, everyone's like, oh, it's going to save the it's, MCU. I think the MCU is fine. And uh, it's, it's savior, be, right? It's, it's so savior. there, there is there's more it's than I think. Pieces, right? <laughs> other than Endgame and Infinity War, like I don't know if a movies had more on more pressure uh, mm -hmm. than this one. I'm That's also awesome. worried it might be like multiverse of madness where everything gets ruined before the movie and everybody picks apart every frame and every secret and gem is out you know months before the movie and it's like with multiverse it's like oh the Illum you could tell the illuminati they were gonna like hide for a little bit you know and then you know, it's like i saw it all but hopefully yeah. they have so much packed in that they can kind of just throw some crumbs our way and we'll be happy yeah. Yeah, I think like in this day and age, like we're we're gonna get the spoilers, you know, and yeah. and I agree, like something that I think that Deadpool has going for it that it's almost like okay, like it's almost in a way unbreakable because of the fourth wall break. It's just kind of like, yeah, this is a fucking movie, and we're all here for fun, like because because with some of the other movies, 
you know, the Avengers, like, you know, Endgame, just for example, like, I mean, great movie, but it takes itself seriously, you know, and, and you can find those cracks. And when you exploit those cracks, it makes it not as, you know, you can't, you can't keep leaning on that tone um, when you can find holes in it. Right. But uh, with Deadpool, I think that you can explain the holes by being like, it's a movie and it's Deadpool and it's all good, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, we'll see what the, what everybody feels about it. But I think as long as we're, you know, going in it with the, what the hell expectations, I think we should uh, be happy. I think ultimately if it's good, it's, it will, it'll hit all the right notes, right? Like as long as it's good, you know, and if it's uh if it's not so good, then we'll we'll hear about it. But uh, as long as they did it well and they've done the first two great, and I, I the trailer was awesome. I I feel like the hopes will um, the expectations will match what what we end up seeing in the end. But I'm also a biased Marvel apologizer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the cognitive dissonance with uh you know the House of Mouse is real. <laughs> I will say that, guys, but I watched the Marvels again with my wife and kids who hadn't seen it before. Both of my children loved that movie. I will say my wife, right towards the end, she turns to me and goes, this didn't get good reviews, did it? <laughs> it's not very good. I'm like, sure, the kids are happy, right? So I think some of these movies, we got to remember, they're not all for us, right? Yep. Good point. Right. Just Fine. knowing, expecting that it's going to suck and you won't be disappointed. Yeah. This one is it's definitely for us. Right. My life philosophy right there. Yeah. And they set the tone, too. I was worried also. I had all these expectations because I've been following all the leaks and all the images and, you know, all the theories. And just the buildup for this was bigger than the Super Bowl. Um, but I think just keeping it simple and, like, catching us up to where Deadpool just left off and bringing his humor kind of just really put it into frame. Like, all right. This is a Deadpool movie. You know this yeah, is going to have great writing, you know, great characters, and it's going to be, it's going to blow our minds. But they want to blow our, blow the doors off, like when we all sit, get our butts in the seat at the theater. Um, but and then, and then, like, like you were saying, Dan, you went back and looked at it. I went frame by frame through the whole thing to pick out all the characters, the the settings, everything, and like. I felt like a CIA like opera <laughs> going through everything and connecting we're, all the dots and you know we're <laughs> about to get into all that. But oh. I, I I will say I think the trailer also quells the fears of did this get Disneyed? You know, like oh, yeah. did they dull it down? Yeah. Did they you know take a lot of the Deadpoolness out of it? It's they seemed... put a pegging joke. In the pre in the trailer, exactly. that's, that's got to be something. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Sense. They did yeah. take that out of the international trailer, though. Did um, uh, yeah. the, the international trailer changed pegging to rated R or, or something like the R rating? So this is uh, the fir first time it Disney's doing an R rating or whatever the line was. So I guess there's certain international communities that wouldn't have uh, either, or they just wouldn't get the pegging joke, but. Uh, I no, they usually scrub that stuff when it goes international, or yeah. they cut those scenes. Yeah, but that's okay. We're, we we'll get the pegging. So as long as we get it here, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I right. want the pegging. <laughs> 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 We I only get the feeling like Josh is. Um, oh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say I, the one thing I do want to take away is like when I watched that trailer though, I realized like how easy was this movie to write for whoever wrote it? Because if you think about it. They set up, they had a Daredevil 2. Like, Disney didn't know they were doing this. Daredevil 2 ends with him playing around with time travel. And then they have the TVA and all that stuff. Like, the fact's like, oh, that's perfect. It matches up just right. The fact the Fox universe comes over. It's basically like, hey, we've already set this up for the multiverse. Um, and that couldn't have been delivered. They had a little bit of luck there, I think. I, with I think that is a very lucky, uh, a lucky yeah. Life yeah. For, for Disney that that was what they did with it. Well, the end of Daredevil, uh, Deadpool 2, yeah. yeah. So. That's cool. So I have a quick question. Does Josh, do you just have Instagram? You don't have a YouTube channel? Who, me? Yes. Yeah, just on Instagram. Uh, you okay. know, I've consulted Mike okay. and other folks in the past about YouTube. And um, as much as I would love to, you know, like develop, you know, content, and I have plenty to go around, 
Um, it, I just don't <laughs> have the time commitment. And well, I enjoy, yeah. you know, I enjoy all the all the YouTubers and like, again, like I think I think I've said in the show, like, ever since I was a little kid collecting and like, you know, 1994, just wishing that I had a group of dudes or whomever to just geek out X Men, and here we are. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was sharing everybody's channel links, and I wanted to make sure that I. Dreams come true. Got you if you had one. <laughs> so, so oh, Ferraris, like you, Porsches, man. and Ferraris. The rest of us go on live streams to talk about X-Men comic books. <laughs> Life's simple pleasures, right? <laughs> so uh, I actually have the um, I have the trailer up here. We're not going to play it, but we just kind of use it as a little visual reference uh, for some of the, the things we'll talk about or the details oh. we'll get into. Um, you know, right off the bat, we start with this birthday party uh, for Deadpool for Wade. And immediately you see that uh, there's some characters that have returned that died in Deadpool 2. And that's going back to what Mike was saying, right? Was uh, he must have gone back in time and righted some wrongs and brought back at least some of the, the X-Force that he put together in, in uh in the in the sequel but uh, not everybody <laughs> so keep it right here uh so yep. that's shatterstar right in yeah. the white i didn't even notice the braid until maybe like the sixth time i watched this i would like until somebody was like that's shatterstar and i'm like what like what like what is anything how can i define him at all because he was in deadpool too right yeah it's the um, same actor too so if you, I think he was wearing that that jacket in uh, Deadpool too. Also, okay, yeah, something similar to that. I yeah. didn't see Deadpool too. You haven't seen Deadpool? Not two? seen Deadpool seen too. No. Oh my god, it's oh, so good, buddy! You got to check it out. I I don't. I, yeah, I should. Yeah, I don't know. Why. I think I've seen like a clip or something, but I just this would all make a lot more sense if you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's where I was like, "There's nothing here for me. There is just a bunch of people." Um, but that braid, it's, you know, it's this red braid, right? Like that, that threw me off. So, okay. Well, Dan, you got to at least see it before this comes out. You're like, yeah, yeah, and it, maybe I'll go watch it and then I'll come join you guys back in this chat. <laughs> there you go. Uh, uh, Let's wait for you. It's on, it's on Disney. So, <laughs> got it. He's still an X-Men fan, Troy. Uh, and we, we love Dan. So, yeah, it's, it, it, sure. no, I. I've had my X Men card revoked several times. Somehow they just keep. I, just, <laughs> they keep doing it good. I mean, Deadpool and X Men. He's uh, not even a mutant, right? He's a trainee, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't. I think Deadpool. Yeah, that'll, 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 that'll make more sense point. when you see the movie. <laughs> We've so got Dan, who's uh, on the right. Dude, no idea. No, <laughs> Negasonic, uh, Dwarhead, and um, Yukio. Yukio. Yuriko, Yukio, you, you, yeah, Yukio. her girlfriend. Right. With the uh, the badass chain, psychic chain thing. And then a few of just uh, the non mutant characters, just his friends from the movies. Blind Al and. Fat, and then, fat Gandalf, they call it. I can't remember. <laughs> Gandalf. So he doesn't get any speaking lines, right? His name's Liefeld. <laughs> his his name's Liefeld in the that was that's his character's name. So let's just kind of zip through the birthday scene and get to some of the juicier stuff. So obviously the the TVA shows up. We get the awesome pegging joke. And then he gets taken to the TVA. So, Mike, you were mentioning that, like, this isn't exactly the TVA we've, we've seen before. Which I wonder could be, like, a, a, it could be part of a few things, right? Like, it could be now that the TVA's been remodeled after Loki 2. They've kind of made some, some changes. Or it's a different part of the TVA. You know, we're just seeing different parts of it or maybe this is something different right like maybe this is a time thing or uh 
different dimension, a different so, TVA, or you know, well, who knows? Well, well, remind it's, me, it's, it's been a whole like two months since they had a Loki season two, but did all the main characters go back to their regular lives, or they they kept staying at the TVA, right? They kept working. We didn't, we didn't really find out. He just saved everybody, but. Correct. Okay. My buddy had subtitles on when this was playing, and they called that guy Paradox, I guess was his name. Oh, he's subtitles. Paradox. Yeah, see, so one of the things I was thinking about in the Loki series, when Loki looks out at the TVA, it's massive. Absolutely massive. Right. And who knows, yeah. maybe this is just a different part of this massive, you know, uh, organization um, yeah. working different angles. Like you have the Loki part working on the Kang problem. And these guys are working on the, you know, whatever they need Deadpool for, you know. But they also happen. didn't. They also didn't like arrest him or, or you know, you know what I mean. Like he's not a prisoner. Uh, they're recruiting him in some right. regard. Yeah. Right? I love that he has, still has uh, staples stuck in his scalp where he stapled the wig on. <laughs> With the wig yeah, on. There's little tufts of hair coming out all over his head if you look. The, the joke, <laughs> the joke here was funny too. Where he's like, "When you were sleeping, you were so, you sold yourself." He's like, oh, "I wasn't sleeping." <laughs> <laughs> so the comedic timing to go from from that to asking like, "And who are you?" Like, like it's just the pacing in general when it comes to Ryan Reynolds and Deadpool, mm. all based on the first movie, is that <laughs> it flows so well. Like it's just such. Uh, so he he's he's fantastic there. I mean, yeah, he's he's a comedic genius. Um, and like the writing and the directing, like everything came together in the Deadpool movies. But uh Ryan Re Ryan Reynolds really is, in my opinion, a comedic genius. Perfectly yeah. cast. <laughs> so says the Canadian, right? <laughs> the Canadian. Yeah, I'm a little biased there too. <laughs> no, he's he's excellent. He is excellent. He's made for the role. So they kind of writing. You know, it's writing. They show this scene where he's looking at his suit in a locker. I kind of think that this is a bit of a, this is like a look at maybe where he, what he's been doing leading up to that birthday party. Like maybe he hung up the, the Deadpool suit for a bit. He's like trying to lead a normal life of some kind. Cause this doesn't really look like, t like the TVA, right? Like he, why was why would he have the name tag? Why does he have like a blue collar golf shirt on or whatever? Um, I think this is says something to do with like maybe what he's been doing since he got back from saving the time stream and making all those changes. Because it does also seem like he then gets recruited and he then dons the suit back on and it's like a new suit and he feels well, like it does make it does yeah. make sense because the result of him being a vigilante superhero in the end of, of, of the second movie was the death of vanessa right i mean that was the whole premise of the movie right yeah so maybe he's like I, i'm done with that i don't want to risk my family i'm done yeah, so. and he brought all these people back, doesn't want to get them killed or anything like that, so he just kind of takes on uh, a, a regular life. But maybe that wasn't fulfilling for someone like Deadpool. And it's the classic, I mean, he literally is wearing a blue collar. <laughs> and right. it's the classic commando, we need you back. We need you back in action. I'm retired now. <laughs> no, we need the best. Love it. Which then, of course, leads us to this scene where he starts looking at previous MCU action with different characters. We saw Captain America in the Winter Soldier. Uh, that like the the one on the left, he's fighting Batroc the Leaper. Um, so all scenes from that movie. And then I'm trying to. Find we do it. see the Hulk, right? Yeah, I'm just trying to get to that. Point. Yeah, there's the Age of Ultron scenes, and there you it's, go. Right. And so or. And the, all this, I think, comes together a little later in the in, in the trailer. Yeah. And you can even see him in the in the bottom left. Uh, he's accepting the Grammy yeah. or Oscars or whatever it is. For a, for uh, Wrexham, so yeah, like, the Emmy he is even paying attention to our universe. And that was like a week ago. 
And they no. <laughs> him into the trailer. I love it. Which so then, this is when it starts to get juicy. Um, some of the leaks that they've that 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 have come out prior to the trail, like we've seen, uh, you know, the onset photos of kind of like a deserty area, post-apocalyptic era. We've seen uh, different villains from the X Men world that have leaked out. Uh, so this is clearly like a desert scape. I don't know if this is the same place as um, the void, you know, from Loki, the the place you go when you get pruned. But there's sort of like a Mad Max element that uh, those those X Men villains show up in that that we'll see some more from in the trailer. It also could be the. Uh what's left of an incursion with the 21st century Fox universe. Yep. Yeah, no, totally. I think there's different possibilities uh, that this could be also because like from the Loki series, the void was always kind of like stormy and, and overcast. And this is, this looks like sunny and deserty. So I wonder if they're, they're different places or somehow maybe you, you, that he goes there and then all of a sudden there is some kind of incursion that happens and then they end up in the void itself. I have a, I have a theory about the void. I have a theory that the void is going to be battle world. That's a great theory. Cause it has pieces of all these other incur his other timelines and worlds yeah. in it. So. That would Totally There's a very sense. clear Easter egg later on, and we'll get to it at the at the end of where this is going with a comic book that they show in the trailer. Yes. <laughs> so, um, let's see here. I, I do want to ask you guys though, real quick. Do, how do you guys feel about the fact like he always breaks the fourth wall, and it's and it's funny and great. But you know, when we saw that clip in the TVA with looking at our own real world, and you see you know the Fox Studio stuff, if would it bother you guys too much if it's if everyone else breaks the TVA breaks the fourth wall, basically saying that our reality is just one of many, like our actual reality. And would that bother people? It's one thing to have Deadpool do it, but you know, even when She Hulk had, you know, the whole thing with Kevin, you know, and the robot, it bothered people. Do you think there's a point where it goes too far where it just takes you out of the whole cinematic universe when you basically say it's not real? You know? Just curious how people are gonna push back, if people are gonna push back on that one. I, I like the She Hulk breaking the fourth wall, but she does that in the comics too. So I mean right. I mean, I like. I just I can see how people would be like, "Oh, if he just says, oh, this is actually part of a cinematic universe." <laughs> the fog, you know, she did part of the Fox rights. How much is that going to bother people, if at all? You know, I'm curious. She yeah, did it before so Deadpool. <laughs> yeah, well, and they took it from the Deadpool kills the Marvel universe, um, and then put it on the the She Hulk show. But I, I mean, I, it's just how how is Ryan Reynolds writing this? How is he presenting the breaking of the fourth wall? that caliber is going to like you know make it or break it and i think it's going to make it because it's it's my reynolds yeah that's kind of I his shtick. Right it's always and, been his kind of shtick and outside of a deadpool movie if presumably he's going to go on to be in the mcu how does that work same thing with she hulk do they just never break the fourth wall or do they if it's a serious movie you know like secret wars how's that going to work uh, i know they played out with deadpool that he's crazy but it's clearly that's not what they're implying in all these movies. So it should be I have a, I have a hot take theory on the importance of Deadpool and his ability to break the fourth wall puts him on par with the power of the Watcher. Like he can, he has present, uh, like omnipresence. He can see into multiple universes, and maybe that's what gives him. That's why they recruit him because he has the ability to see, you know, all the pop culture, everything, all the movie universes, everything, and go and find those characters. Hmm. And that's going to that's going to bring us to like, you know, Secret World, Secret Wars, Battle World, all that, and that Deadpool is going to play an intricate role in recruiting, you know, the heroes from the multiverse that are going to be needed. That's my that's my hot take. Yeah. I hope they don't give them like extra powers in that sense, but I I do kind of see like how he could have like an awareness, you know what I mean? Like uh just an awareness of the fact that there's multiverses and you know he could sort of talk to break that fourth wall uh and how that could be be somehow 
significant to uh, to why he's the one picked for recruitment and for being a recruiter, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, well, cool. it's an endless rabbit hole of what what could hey. what could be. Um, Brian, you you had called out last night in our chat um, that this uh, could potentially be. Cassandra Nova, right? Yep. It also could be Patrick Stewart. Like I don't it know. Could, yeah. <laughs> or James McAvoy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for that, yeah, he could for yeah, for that matter. Um, and then this is this scene. I I feel like hasn't really gotten a ton of attention. Right here. Right here. That's the Hulk's bed in Thor Ragnarok. Exactly. Uh, this is his bed on Sakar. And it does. This is when you start to. It starts to feel in the trailer like, okay, Deadpool's going to be traveling around a lot of different places. And I, I honestly, I'm so curious what would, what would be the thing that brings him to Hulk's chambers in, in on Sakar? Like, is he is he recruiting already in the movie? Uh, that could like open a whole like so many cameos could happen in this movie all right he's in somebody's bed that's for sure but it, it it is it's like it's the the bro or the big jaw that's like exactly like uh like that bed i mean who knows you never know it could be something else but uh it's pretty similar it just makes me think like oh man any link to hulk to get a hulk versus wolverine on the big screen, if Marvel, if if they don't do that in this movie, they've missed a huge opportunity. I mean, I Gosh. I think they could, <laughs> there's so many things they could do, but like they also got to save some stuff for for another time, right? Like, I don't know if that you're. I wouldn't bet on Hulk being in this, but you never you never know. You never know. There is another Hulk thing I will I'll mention later on when we get to uh, when we get to that scene, but. This was also really awesome uh, to see the back of Patch. As I don't yeah, know, I, just, I think this that. is cool because it's establishing another location in the X world, Manipur, that's been around for a long time. So, uh, yeah, let alone it's, yeah, it's Patch. been in the MCU stuff. They've had Manipur. It was in uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. It's, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. There he is. Mike's got it. So does Chris. Yeah. Oh, Chris does it too. Yeah, Shama, genius right there. I heard I some people think that <laughs> some people think that this his body here is too small to be Hugh Jackman, and that yeah. it's a variant, yep. like it's yep. uh, Daniel Radcliffe or something, or Taron Edgerton, or Taron. Yeah, I would love for that to be Daniel Radcliffe, and Deadpool's just like that's you're not the right Wolverine, and just caps on that. <laughs> well, that's kind of the rumors is that like. Deadpool might be like on a like going from all these different realities and places looking for a particular Wolverine and then he runs into other Wolverines other like a uh, montage I of love that gag yeah and I, I think Hugh Jackman also has said he it the roles he 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 termed it a dual role so this could still be him but it would be really cool even if it's just a joke that like this ends up being one of those guys that that have been rumored to be the next <laughs> one, and then they just get capped. <laughs> you know the, the whole like, thing going back to the Hulk thing. I mean, Wolverine and the Hulk have a great history, so that could be. Yeah, you know. Uh, yeah, it's true. I mean that that, that, that that cover you guys just showed Hulk could and get Joe uh, fix it. You know, like that would be wild. Would be a real wild. Uh, wow, wild development potentials. You could just be the magic feels like a bodyguard in this the scene in the same way talks like that's all you need right yeah, yeah. oh totally or he like just like opens a door or closes right. a door on somebody you know or just like something. a big fist with the with the, the oh, white socks yeah, on with the green yeah. hand or... so cool so yeah. cool so that's awesome um lots of really juicy little teases in there so then he gets to don this new suit. Uh, this is the, obviously the suit that he he's been in in the leaks. It's a little bit more red than the previous ones. The, I thought that this scene was awesome. I loved. Uh, 
I, 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 I was wondering, I wonder if the person who did this scene actually went down and did the splits and then they just reversed the footage. Cause that just seems like, I, I, is that not, it seemed like they pulled them up. I mean, they could have also harnessed it. Yeah. Right. No, that's pure Deadpool enthusiasm pulling himself up there. But it's such a, I love that. I love that. (laughs) Did he have as many uh, little pouches or is that more of a life held gag? Did he have all those in the previous movies? I think think they added some. (laughs) As life nice. held his nice. I mean, if you, early look at it, if you look at it, um, his first appearance, he's got a bunch of pouches. Yeah. Yeah. I'd also just like I wanna I wanna while we're on this scene, and we can we can look at it in a couple other ones, just note his gloves. His gloves are like more black than red. And just hold on to that thought a little bit. <laughs> ATV, you do it once and then you're dead, right? All right, so then we get to this scene. So now we're in a snowy kind of Eastern European forest. And this is very, looks very, very similar to that same scene from Age of Ultron that we saw on the screens in TVA. Mm -hmm. In fact, that same scene when all those, all the Avengers are like kind of like jumping across the screen. They're jumping over a flipped vehicle, and then there's a flipped vehicle in the background. Pretty See, interesting. That's, that's, that's the the uh, truck that's in that scene. Yeah, an uh, Age of yeah. Ultron. Yeah, and I keep I, I might keep coming back to this, but what a perfect scene to have Wolverine versus Hulk in the snowy. Yeah, it's in Canada in the snow with Windigo, but the setting. Is is the same in their first meeting? Oh, please. actually, you guys, you know what this could be? I don't want to spoil anything hypothetically. No, no, we're, we're here for the because you guys remember they had the uh, Deadpool more Secret Wars, right? Showing that during Secret Wars, the eighty series, he was actually there doing his own thing. It could be that the reason he's on, you know, Sakaar and here is that while the real MCU things are happening, he was also there making sure those things happen. Like he could be. Have been the gag could be that he was always there doing things off to the side. The TV is trying to stop him, like he's trying inserting himself or trying to help out the Avengers. You know what I mean? It could be something like that. No, yeah, that's, that's a good that. theory. The one, the one thing that I guess makes me curious about this though is the scene. The scene from my Age of Ultron, it's it's very overcast. It's like a totally different kind of like color color scheme and weather scheme. This seems to be like sunny in the daytime, um, so it doesn't quite match that exact time or that scene. So, but it definitely feels like the same place. So, I wonder if it's like maybe just before, just after, or they're so why, is he fighting, why is he fighting the TVA too? If they recruited him, you know. Well, he's definitely yeah. gone rogue in some in some capacity, or this is a time thing, right? Like if this could be before he got. Uh, before he got recruited, I don't know. It could be while he was while he was on his time heist thing at the end of Deadpool two. Lots of different options uh, for this, but gotcha. Pretty yeah, could cool. Be one, could be one of those twists. Could be one of those twists where they say, "Hey, come save the Marvel universe," you know, and be a hero amongst heroes. Um, and really, they're tricking him to like destroy the Marvel universe, mm-hmm. so he's rebelling or breaking away from them. Or maybe the TVA now is under some kind of different jurisdiction, a certain character who well, might maybe be... he realizes that when if he, you know, saves the Marvel universe, he's going to destroy the Fox universe, and he all the people he loves are there, right? right. <laughs> Next gen, totally pull a uh, a Spider Boy on everyone. I was here the whole time. Right. Hmm. Yep. Could be. Right. That would exactly. be a, that would be a really funny uh, outcome. Uh, so then we get into this uh, post-apocalyptic world that has been leaked like crazy. The the 20th century Fox logo destroyed. This definitely feels like it's part of that void from from Loki. Uh, you know, just remnants of past timelines and and realities. Uh, and this is where 
he he fights where he's gonna fight a Wolverine of some kind. Uh, definitely the yellow suit, based off the leaks that have come out and based off of the the end of the trailer, right? Uh, but this action scene was like, this was probably one of my favorite parts of the trailer. Pretty dope. Yeah. Wow, it's amazing. Yeah. But yeah, see, like this is cl like cloudy. It just kind of matches, you, and you just see a lot more in the background, like those just remnants and vehicles and things like that. What's the big cloud monster? Is it Agaroth? A lion. A, a lion. lion. And we're yeah, getting to that right, right here. here. Yeah. So. Big purple cloud eating the TVA agent. So I would, I would, that's pretty telling that where where they are, but. This is also all those Mad Max vehicles that uh, we saw in that distance shot earlier, but also in some of the leaks. So, again, is the desert the same place as this, or does that somehow like get merged into, or or uh, what should we call it, uh, pruned pruned into this void, or is it an incursion of some kind? Lots of possibilities. So this was this scene. Uh, ah, come on. Yeah, it's so oh, great. Yeah. Hey. Oh, there we go. Um, <laughs> everybody was saying this is Doctor Doom. No, no, I don't. I don't agree with that either. No. <clears throat> but Isn't a pretty he? crazy vehicle. No, you could. It was so brief you couldn't tell at first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, think, when you uh, when you're able to zoom in, and his face does not look well, right. Yeah, but I think they are giving us Doctor Doom hints, and I think they wanted us to look at this guy and think Doctor Doom. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. Yeah, I mean, you never know what they're. You know, they could be. And they, you know, across. they can always change somebody's appearance. I mean, you know. Yeah. The... yeah. Um. That would be crazy if they unveiled like all these things and then Doctor Doom on top of it. That would be, mm. that'd be surprising. Yeah, like gun wielding. Uh, yeah, Doom. It, it, yeah. yeah, we'll see him in a few minutes, anyways. That yeah. It's not... So this is the this is the scene I was alluding to with the the gloves. I don't think these are the same gloves that Deadpool wears throughout the rest of the trailer. And there's already been kind of some uh, leaks that there are multiple Deadpools as well mm -hmm. in uh, in the movie. Is it Lady Deadpool? I was just going to say, is this, is this, is this T-Swift? <laughs> oh, Blake Lively. Yeah, Blake Lively. Uh, please don't let Taylor Swift be in this movie. Yeah. There's a Deadpool Prime too. It looks like spoilers. Sorry. Ah, uh, yeah. Right, answer Deadpool. <laughs> yeah, Deadpool. Deadpool. Yeah. Ah. Oh, oh, hey. Where is yeah. it? Pyro. That's that's a pretty. I mean, it actually makes a lot of sense with what's kind of come out about it, but it's still pretty cool that uh, that Pyro's in it. It seems like there's like this Mad Max. Brotherhood of Mutants that uh, Deadpool's going to run into um, during this film. Right, it, it looks like has... a whole lot of Fox properties. You know, that's the idea. I love the fact he's got goggles, by the way. He's got a, a yellow and red color scheme. I'm pretty psyched about that. Well, he kind of has the, the ultimate X-Men pyro right. feel to yeah. it. That's great. John wants to see Taylor Swift as dazzling. <laughs> yeah, we all we all do. I, I think. kind of do too, to be honest. No. I just, but but it would also be kind of funny that all this spec on Dazzler uh, first appearances. I, I want to touch on that too, like the um, you know, the idea we just talked a little bit about, you know, Hulk, uh, um, you know, the uh, Mister Fix It. Uh, if if he did have an appearance in this movie, let's just say we all agree like it'd probably just be a, a just a moment right mm -hmm. like he's not gonna play a role like you know more than no. like shutting the door on somebody or something right throwing somebody out the door um with that and then and then i also believe if taylor swift is in it as dazzler it's going to be a moment I you agree. know yeah. and well, I mean, in madripoor 
you know, either, uh, and, and either way, it's like, there's going to be a moment where they get a cameo and that's probably it. Um, in that regard, does that fulfill everybody's speculation um, fantasies? <laughs> and are they like, sweet, we paid the premium for this and this is exactly what I wanted? Or do you think everybody's going to be disappointed? Like, oh, I thought that they would be a continuing character or like have a bigger role. Like, it just doesn't feel like, you know, you know, for example, Secret Wars 5 too, just like the, the, these books that boom because they're going to appear in, in the movie. Um, aren't we all thinking that they're just going to make a cameo? And yeah. what do you think that the, the reaction is going to be from people about that? It's, it's always the same. People are, they get their expectations are way too high and then they're disappointed and they're going to be again. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much. Yeah. I'm I'm right. gonna agree. Like, I think it's going to be moments just like you said, because this is a movie about, going all over to visiting a lot of different moments like even these characters like like pyro like it's not going to be a huge part of the film it's going to be a little part of the film you know and i i think there's just going to be a lot of fan service in this movie and if taylor swift comes as dazzler it's going to be a fun little fan service moment and yeah most people who went FOMO and speculated on the books are probably going to be disappointed because let's be honest, most of the time when people do that, they get disappointed. Yeah. And, and yeah I, I, th I think it is, you know, you're right, Ryan and the other Ryan and uh, ca collecting casually, like five seconds probably is good for us. And then uh, ATB mentioned that um, it'll open the door for the possibility. I like that because that's kind of like, uh, I think that that will feed people just like the way that uh, Ryan Colossus collector you got a little taste of Colossus. He wasn't as big of a role as you were hoping he would be from the Deadpool movie originally, but you know, you're always wanting a little bit more and you know that there's the possibility for him to show up more. So that, that's a good call right there. And, and for me in a perfect universe, you have a musical montage, uh, like you had Dolly Parton nine to five and Deadpool two, where Taylor Swift is singing and doing this montage as Deadpool's murdering everybody. And that's her scene. And then maybe you bring her back in Battle World, and then you have her decapitated to to make all the. <laughs> that is a perfect. That is a perfect idea or like prediction. Like that's exactly what they would do. They would make some sort of like funny, memeable moment with Taylor Swift singing. And you see her on stage at Matterport, like. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Patch, Patch and Deadpool, like ripping through or fighting each other or who knows you know and then and then that's it i mean half the country will be happy that taylor swift's in the movie and then the other half of the country will be happy when her head gets cut off exactly it pleases both both sides of, of that <laughs> side. <So> I, <laughs> yeah. let's be honest there's always going to be some the side movie. that's not going to be happy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i want to give a shout out to this actor really quick because he had an interview like two or three weeks ago where he played it so chill. They said, hey, would you ever go back for a movie? He's like, ah, oh, that ship sailed. It was a long time ago. I had a lot of fun. I, if they ever asked me, I'd consider it, but I'd have to really think about it. Like, I, it was the, the coldest I've ever seen anyone when asked that question. Utterly convincing that he had nothing to do with this. And then he shows up nice. in the trailer two weeks after. I'm like, well done. Well played. I've never seen anyone that cool. Hmm. Unlike, uh, like, Andrew Garfield leading right. up to Spider-Man. <laughs> exactly. So we're definitely going to get the Brotherhood Mutants, uh, Brotherhood of Mu Evil Mutants in some capacity, uh, which is awesome. And then we're going to get to the one clip that everybody has been talking do, about. Do we know, just, just before that, when he gets blasted back right there, like through a cement wall, it seems like? Yep. Do we know how, was it an explosion? How did he get, he's just coming through a wall. That's all we know. Yeah. He's okay. just, uh, I think he's hit through a wall or thrown through a wall. Okay. Um, I do believe that this, based on all the stuff I've seen, that this is part of when he's fighting Wolverine, or it might be after he's fought Wolverine. Now he's fighting other mutants, but it's all kind of within that same area. Um, in the void, let's call it. But 
who knows? You never know. Sometimes you, you see all these things, you think you got it pegged. And uh was it that's what I was thinking potentially, right? Hulk is what he said. <laughs> yeah, so we'll see. Um possibilities are endless, but I do think it's kind of part of that uh basketball that special thing. gone wrong. Maybe oh, I'd love that. If, I'd love I'd love to see Colossus mo in more than a birthday party. Um <laughs> All right, so this one we ever we've been talking about it all, or alluding to it. This is the Secret Wars five Easter egg, and now everybody's trying to buy East or uh, everybody's trying to sell their Secret Wars number five. <laughs> I'm gonna make. I've always loved Secret Wars number five. I don't know about you guys, but since ever since 2015 when it came out, man, loved Mike, it. Throw them up, throw them up again, Mike. Oh. This if anybody a, wants to buy one, I won't take less than I don't know thousand dollars. There you go. I'm gonna sell these in my next man number one. You definitely <laughs> make about forty uh, bucks right now. If anyone wants to trade me for a Hulk, they're not going for forty dollars right now. I remember yesterday we were asking. Texting. They can't be going for that. Okay, yeah, that's what they're asking. But okay, well, yeah, we, no, we were texting yesterday about it, and we were saying, and um, Travis was saying like, "Hey, this book's on fire right now." And I checked and it's like, oh yeah, there's a lot of sales for this five bucks, you know, but, but yeah. a lot of $5 sales for that on the 11th. And then this morning when I checked it again, um, yeah, I mean, 30, 40 bucks, right? Like Crazy. people are losing like, their minds. You cannot find one for cheaper now. Like I remember even thinking like, well, five bucks, you know, that's, it's amazing. It still it surprises me how much some of these well, books. I'm pissed. I saw one in a dollar bin last week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, Trav and I were watching the the, the game, and I'm I keep kept flipping my phone around to him. I'm like, like, hey, this book is you should post about this. This book is spiking, and then I'm like, oh, hey, also, uh, new X Men. I think I have a few copies of that. <laughs> First Cassandra Nova, yeah, it's blowing up. All right, so and, but also something uh, I don't know if anybody noticed. On top of that comic book, that Secret Wars five, there you go, there it is. They keep telling they give they give us so many Hulk references, man. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm yeah. sticking to it. I noticed it this morning, and I was scouring YouTube and everywhere to see if anybody had noticed, and like I couldn't find it on any of the breakdowns or anything. And I threw it up on a on a, a little short on YouTube. It's already got like two thousand views. It's, I feel like a I feel like an insider all of a sudden, but yeah, well, this is yeah. this is the Garan the soda scoop. that uh, the tainted soda with Hulk blood from uh, the Incredible Hulk. So I mean, could we get a Stanley Hulk? <laughs> that would be very Deadpool, but yeah, I you could. You you never know what you're gonna get, but. It, it's interesting. I mean, this could be, all mean nothing, or you know, it could be it could be more Hulk references, right? Like if that bed is Sakar and they're showing us this bottle, um, maybe there's something to it. But I also think that there's like a, a potential that this is just kind of a little tip of the cap or a nod to where Marvel's going in the next little while. You've got the build up to Secret Wars. And then you also got this whole narrative no, going into the, next, into the next Cap movie with a Red Hulk and the leaders coming back. And it's all, you know, She-Hulk was a little bit about Hulk blood. Maybe they're going to continue that that narrative forward. So maybe it's just a little nod to some of the the storylines that they're they're going to have in the next little bit. I like what John said. What if that was a uh, Edward Norton's version of Planet Hulk? Planet Hulk, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what is? But uh, Chad says he's mean? banned. <laughs> Wait, what's the band thing about? What's it's true. Feige, Feige has a list of. I think it's like I don't know. Maybe somebody else knows. There's only a couple people on his band list, and Edward Norton was so fun to work with mm -hmm. that he's banned from ever coming back to Marvel Studios. Because he was a tyrant. Mean, I guess he was just awful yeah. to work with. It doesn't mean they can't use his CG Hulk likeness, though. You know. Yeah, they could use his Hulk. Let's get an Eric Bana Hulk. Yeah, I'll, I'd rather have Eric Bana. 
Heck yeah. <laughs> Where you shoot them with bullets and bigger and bigger. I like that aspect. <laughs> I thought that was cool. And that, I mean, technically, you know, Norton Hulk is the same Hulk, just CGI face uh, change changed on it, but uh, it's not like it's a different reality. Get a Lou Ferrigno Hulk. Nah, <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> That's who tossed uh, Deadpool through that wall. <laughs> Edward Norton Hulk fighting Fox Silver Surfer. <laughs> Why not? That's part of that movie. Yeah, I mean, the potentials with with Disney's budget of what they do in this movie. Oh man. Yeah, I mean, they they it's the bit it's the one movie uh, for the year. So and we'll we'll have two more trailers till like when the movie comes out, right? Probably. Yeah, I'm sure in a few months they'll give us really in-depth and they'll give us some big stuff, but I hope they don't spoil everything. Like someone mentioned, um, uh, oh, shit, uh, the uh, Doctor Strange movie, how they gave it all away in the trailers, essentially, and didn't leave up much up for the imagination. The thing is, the thing thing is they they got to fight getting butts in seats. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's where the the motivation to reveal more comes from is to just get people out. So I think what they'll do is they'll probably release, they'll definitely release a, a more revealing trailer that gives you a little bit more of an idea of what the plot is. The story is gives you some more things to get excited about, obviously show Wolverine. But then I think what um, might happen is depending on the, cause they can do a lot of projections on pre-sales and all that sort of thing and just if they're if if they're feeling like they're not they're not selling enough tickets that then they might drop something revealing even more uh but if the if the hype's just at 11 and they're they're projecting to just knock it out of the park which i'm i'm pretty sure they're i like that that thought as like a strategy like they could switch it up depending on how they feel their projections are for for people watching and they could spoil a little bit more well, they did. They totally did that with Quantumania. Um, they yeah. they revealed way Marvel. more about Quantumania once they started finding out that people don't like it and uh, it's gonna bomb at the box office. And then that's when they started just like leaking literally like everything about the movie. And then aren't we gonna be disappointed the more that like the closer we are to guessing what's really going to happen in it if it is like what we are hoping and guessing aren't we going to be a little disappointed that we already expected well there's a solution to that dan it's stop yeah. watching that stuff see as someone who loves movies and i'm addicted to this stuff i've gotten better in my older age of just ignoring it chat I get out it. right now everybody this is you're not going to end up liking what you hear here. We're we're um, still early in the process, but like once that next trailer comes, then it's going to get real. And like the closer you get to it, the more leaks are going to come out. Uh, the more people, more things, more people get on, on the production of of it too. The more things leak out as well, right? Well, and there's been so say, many man? leaks. There's been yeah. so many leaks leading up to this trailer for a long time. You know they let this stuff out on purpose just yeah. to build the hype. You know, 100%. what are you gonna say, Dan? Oh, I don't, I don't know. I thought you were saying something about chat, chat, get out right now. I thought you were gonna, oh, drop get out because you don't want to consume this. Like, everybody's already doing all the work for you, Ryan. You didn't need to stay up all night and get no sleep last night to find the, the, oh, the yeah. whole, <laughs> like, or whatever. It's like, um, I mean, that that's generally my philosophy. Like, I stayed so far away from these movies, I didn't even watch Deadpool 2, right? So there is uh I, I mean that's that's my approach anyway to most stories i wait to hear is this worth watching because there's so much media to consume um i mean i obviously i mean i watch all you guys so so i'm you know what the hell am i doing right you know um i don't know uh, my personal feeling with the movies, though, is like for me, if I see a trailer, like I can, like we're none of us are dummies, right? We all read a lot. We all know how plots work, how movies work. You can usually piece it together, the rough outline, pretty simply. 
The trick is you watch the trailers, you just don't go down the rabbit hole any further than that because even any little hint of an actor showing up, you fill in the blanks and you're always right. That's the problem with Multiverse of Madness. Even if they were kind of careful about it, you knew exactly who was showing up in that movie. You know what I mean? Even if you see it kind of a way, you're, we're not idiots. We know what we're looking at. So the trick is you have to just not watch it. I, I yeah. really don't think there's any way around it. There's the only way to really avoid it because you will fill in those blanks. But uh, it really comes down to that last couple of weeks before it releases. That's when they start leaking out all the crazy stuff. People see different cuts of it. You get international things, international trailers. The best one they did it was the Spider-Man movie. We all know who was in it. But they still played it kind of close to the chest. They kind of had deliberate leaks. But they still did a good job because they didn't need to show that much. They knew it was going to be a hit anyways. I'm hoping Deadpool 3 is the same. They don't need to show us a lot because they already know it's going to be a hit. And that comes down to them doing tracking while coming up to it. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, the movie sucks and they was worried that people aren't going to watch it. Then they're going to put more leaks out. Yeah. But I think if people are really excited about it, I don't think they're going to show too much. Just don't watch the other stuff on the internet. I agree. Um, I agree. Watch all of our wonderful yeah, YouTube channels like and IG accounts, obviously. But don't we all need the views and the subscribers, so please, yeah, just stay right. away from those things and watch us. <laughs> I, and I swear, we won't we won't do as many in-depth uh, di dives on this stuff on the channel. We'll just kind of like top line things and keep it keep it spoiler free um, in the future. But um, yeah, I, I I agree, Mike. It's uh, I think this I think this movie's gonna kill it, and uh, they won't have to they won't have to go down those. I know they need to show stuff for a certain demographic who needs to have to see a cool trailer, but wouldn't you guys just love it? Like I always said this, Spider-Man 3, they didn't need to do anything other than Tom Holland to come out and go, listen, this movie's so awesome, we can't show you anything. Just go see it. It's going to be amazing. I would have been butt in the seat anyways. That would have been way more intriguing, but there's people out there that need to see the cinematography of a trailer. It drives me nuts, right? They just need to show us bare minimum. I think that still gets people excited. I might be wrong. No, I, 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 if I know I'm going to see a movie, I don't even want to watch a trailer, but yeah. like I've, that's, you know, I've been okay with trailers and spoilers recently because I'm just, I just haven't been watching and keeping up with the, um, with the MCU. So, um, so I'm going to go, uh, but it was great talking to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Dan, Dan, Dan let us know you had, to, you had to bail early. So, Dan, thank you for Word. stopping in. Yeah, I appreciate it, guys. No, yeah. I, like, you know, I I get to learn from you guys what's what's going on, and um, and I appreciate it, and the opportunity to ask you all questions. So, so thanks for being here for and, me. Go watch and the movie do. and review it yeah. next time. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, like, <laughs> I forgot I hadn't seen it. Like, yeah. Yeah, you got to see right. it. Peace. Bye, Dan. Later, Dan. And then there was some... Bye, Dan. Um, yeah, she so threw him in the pit of Krakoa, <laughs> <laughs> exiled. Um, I just had one last thought, but it keeps leaving my mind. Um, I, I do think too with Deadpool, uh, this movie is so gonna be so full of like crazy things that no matter what, I think there's still just gonna be stuff that's gonna surprise and shock so i'm pretty i think it's gonna be a movie that you're gonna have to watch multiple times to, to like yeah. try to catch everything yes yeah, yeah, sure. watchability nice. yeah i have a friend uh my buddy addison he like when the trailer came out he went and he left the room he wants to go into it with tabula rasa just a clean slate and i then i go to the movies with him and just seeing the shock on his face like That's I wish cool. that I could do what he does. I do not have the capacity to like, yeah. you know, and like I wish that I could, but no. I'm the same way. I I'm just like too hyped up, hyped up to stay away from it all. Um, but I I still love it. I love everything. Yeah. yeah. ATV T Ray. Anybody else? Right. I love that movie, man. I love the relic. I that movie that I saw that in the theater when I was younger than I want to admit a long time. That was old. I love that movie. Yeah, right. I had no idea what it was about, and I enjoyed every second of it. Not a great. I don't think I've ever seen it. You don't need to. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, I was going to say maybe I got. It was very early nineties. What did you? Do? All right. Late nineties, early two thousands, maybe. Hmm. Mid nineties? Oh, oh no, I mid nineties. Yeah. Why don't we take a look at some books? Anybody? Yeah. This, there you go. Back to some comic books. Uh. Want I love that we didn't, see how many we didn't ever watch the last book. frame. Yeah. Oh, you want, to, you want to watch the last frame? I think we've all seen it. We all know. Yeah. 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 
I can't wait. I just can't wait for like the 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 buddy cop exchange between Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds. Oh man, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I love it. Or he's like, "Hey, uh, give me a hand up," and then he's the, the claws. He's like, "Oh, never mind. I'm good." <laughs> <laughs> going to be so much fun. It's definitely going to be a h- highlight movie of the year for me cuz and there I was just looking today like there aren't a lot of movies coming out that I'm like super psyched about and that's probably partially because of the the strikes this last year but yeah. um, the studios are kind of stretching things out right slim, now. Slim. I was looking at movies like man there's like hardly any usually they're just like lists and lists for every month and they got like five movies in July and two movies in August. I'm like, there's got to be more coming, but yeah, uh, it's pretty slim. Well, quality over quantity. That's what you hope for in these things. We had all these strikes that happen. So this year, this year's going to be slim. So, but we got Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah. Well, I have some books to show. I'll start with the books. Right. That. Yeah. Cool. All right, I'm gonna start with the one that I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get as many out of the way that you guys already have. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, who's gonna, gonna take one yeah, off the table? Right off the bat, of this one. Um, I will say this, guys. Here, here's me throwing myself under the bus. I never liked Deadpool. I like the movies. I like Ryan Reynolds. I could not give two you know what's about Deadpool in comic books. I do not like him. I'm, I'll actively say that I do not enjoy reading Deadpool books. I don't like them at all. Brave. I do not like the character. But I Very like him. Brave. Sorry. I forgot to say Sam I am. I do not like him, Sam I am. I do not like him. I don't like him here or there. I do not like him anywhere. Um, except for the movies. That's I do like Ryan Reynolds. Uh, I can throw this one up there. We talked about it earlier. You guys saw what appeared to be Patch in the suit. He did look smaller than Mr. Hugh Jackman. Uh, great comic cover, right? Come on. Yeah. We seem to cover. Awesome. Uh, a few issues later, we got this one. Mm. So this is a flashback to an earlier time where um, Wolverine and Sabretooth fight. It seems to be like the turn of the 20th century uh, in Canada somewhere. And this starts the whole story, the mythology of Sabretooth hunting down Wolverine on his birthday, kicking his ass and usually killing someone that's close to him, which anyone who's reading the new comic books featuring a new Sabretooth who's escaped from the Krakoa pit. and Brutal. has Yeah, brutal. And he's recruited multiversal Sabretooth from all the place, and they are killing everybody. So it goes back to this story here by Chris Claremont. Um, it's an awesome story. It goes back and forth between modern times uh, and back then. And, uh, yeah, it's awesome. And also, it was kind of adapted for the first Wolverine Origins movie, which is an awful, awful movie. But <laughs> there's a lot of people like his, his girlfriend there, Silver Fox, whatever. She, this is her first appearance. So this is an awesome read. This comic book is awesome. Um, absolutely, I gotta show this one, and of course, we're probably gonna have at least one, if not multiple, saber teeth, tooths, tooths, tooths. I don't know. Isn't uh, there a, a follow up segment to that issue in a uh, classic X Men issue where saber teeth kind of like it's chronologically where it would take place in the X Men? Saber teeth rips out Wolverine's, you don't even see it's saber tooth, yeah. just someone right. behind Wolverine rips his throat out and throws him over the, the, the seawall into the ocean. And it's yep. it's saber tooth. <laughs> it's always saber tooth. It's always saber. I will say in the '90s though, when saber tooth joined the team, I dug that. I like saber tooth on the X Men. He seemed like a just like a very dangerous animal that they should not probably have. Um, and you know he has issues with everybody, not just Wolverine. Gambit hates him too. You know, so it was cool in the '90s with saber tooth on the team. Loved it. Um, I gotta show this one. We saw it in the beginning when uh mr akins was reading that right what this is my favorite wolverine cover i'm sure one of us showed it last time this is absolutely my favorite wolverine cover of all time i love that panel of him down on the swords of the drip oh it's one of the best favorite cover ever first solo wolverine cover people say first story not really true first silver uh wolverine cover also part of the dark phoenix saga of course um and the last thing i'm going to show you guys i'm not going to show you a comic i'm going to show you a box i had a video that came out today I thought you guys would appreciate this. I finished my Excalibur run in one fell swoop. <laughs> there it nice. is. Volume one, 130 issues, nice. including annuals. So pretty psyched. That was a 2024 goal. So I want to chip away at, you know, X Factor, Alpha Flight, all those other ones. Uh, if any of you out there who are looking for Excalibur, I bought this whole run, but I already had half the run. So if anyone needs extra issues, let me know. Last <laughs> issue, Mike. 
I've been yeah. hunting for the very last issue <laughs> for like they're a rare. year. They're high. They're lower print runs on uh, those higher ones. There, one twenty-five. You're missing. Yeah, I will check. I don't think I have a second one of those. That's I'm ha- I might Brian have- Mary's Megan. So right, right. Wow. Yeah, I'll keep so, an eye on her next. Yeah, Mike, I was just watching your video before we started the live stream, and um, I scooped up, before you got in there, I scooped up um, a bunch of those Alpha Flights. <laughs> oh, you cherry-picked it. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. There were all these un- the complete runs, and then a out. couple locals killed me. You guys just broke up the run, so whatever. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. It's amazing how many books he gets in so often. It's it's the greatest thing. He got an amazing one in two days ago. Yeah, he's a machine. So, all right, go ahead, Brian. What do you got? All right, I, I it drove me nuts. I could not find my first uh, Wolverine versus. So I just went Wolverine versus Deadpool. I could not find the one with the swords crossed. Uh, the first one, but I've got one fifty four. Uh, <laughs> That's the second Life held cover. Yeah. 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 Wolverine yeah. versus Deadpool. Mm. And then we've got an homage to the uh, McFarlane cover. We've got uh, Deadpool's Blade with Wolverine. And someone that. Yeah. Yep. So right. I've always been curious about that, that cover. Is, that cover. Is, Deadpool's, is Deadpool's mask just ripped open and you can see his face? Yeah, or it's ripped it's up. It's all, yeah, it's all okay. slashed open. I was like, yeah. what is going on with that? You're questioning yeah, Rob Liefeld? Yeah, it's bad art. That's why. <laughs> yeah. I hate that cover. And then, uh, I don't really know if you guys know the uh, there's, a, there's a big chunk of the run in Wolverine Origins. There's a, or there's a large storyline with Wolverine versus Deadpool. So, uh, so we got number 21. Yeah, cool cover. Great art. Who's that <laughs> artist? I can't remember. Uh, it is. <laughs> it's got a a symbol for a name over here on the side. I don't know. <laughs> it's Prince. <laughs> yes. Prince. A couple the artists of artists 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 the opposite you got right here, you got the close up of Wolverine with Deadpool posing in the background. And then the next issue is the close up of Deadpool with Wolverine posing in the background. That that's a good oh, we just lost them. Oh, that's a pretty good series. Really? Well, you're up, Eric. Okay, I'm up. I'm ready. <laughs> well, of course, here, here's number two. First appearance. Oh, oh he's sort of coming back. Nice. First Deadpool. I, yeah, I was I fortunate to buy it off the rack back in the day. I wish I bought more than one, but oh yeah. All right, we only knew. We'll get back to you, Brian. All right. Uh, and then Brian mentioned this one. Oh the yeah, first, there it uh, is. fight of those two. Yeah. That there's one that went bonkers. When yeah, that and then was, follow I this one up. A little nod to it in the the newest oh, yeah. Yeah. series cool. where they're fighting danger. That's the one that Ryan Reynolds was reading on the toilet when he first teased Hugh Jackman. Coming yeah, <laughs> I love those teases. It was. I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was a different one. I thought it was the first appearance of Danger. Was it it was one? those ones, uh, but everyone's like, "Oh, Danger!" Oh, weird. Okay. Okay. Here's another new one from the newest Wolverine run. Oh, nice! I I use that uh, I use Very that on. as the background for the thumbnail for this for this show. Okay, Deadpool. Yeah, these two and this this little run that they did in Wolverine was it was pretty funny. Uh, it basically Deadpool uh, annoying Wolverine the whole time, and Wolverine just cutting them up for the heck of it. <laughs> but let's go Deadpool with uh, Merc with the mouth number one. They did a lot of uh, like homage covers, so. This was a homage to what was it, Savage Tales, right? Oh, yep. Yeah, first yeah. thing. Shout out Brandon from Mon Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then this one makes me laugh when I see it. Homage <laughs> to Nirvana's album cover and <laughs> trying to get the taco. Cool. That's a cool cover. <laughs> There's a bunch in this series. So at least he's clothed. That would be a cool collection to. Or like sub collection to ha- to get if you're a big music person. Yeah, you all yeah. Like they did like movie cover. I 
think they did like Scarface. They did, uh, I think, Dawn of the Dead, where it was Deadpool's I the aliens one. Up. Alien one, cool. yeah. All right, and then I got, since nobody's put it up yet, I put a one shot of Lady Deadpool. I know uh, this has been kind of hyped that we may see this in the movie. We don't know. Was she holding those guns? Fingies crossed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and then lastly, I pu- I'll put up some life field goodness with some Deadpool corpse. So we got a bunch. Of- I like the dog one, actually. Dog <laughs> Will we see a dog? dog I mean, in the, the sport, I mean, spoiler warning they showed us the picture of Deadpool dog, it's confirmed. All right, next. I'll go back to Brian so you could finish up. Yeah, what, what do you got there, Brian? All right. Uh, so I was going at, before my internet so rudely crashed. Uh, Wolverine Origins number 24. Uh, and I looked up, it's uh, Simone Bianchi, I guess. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so you got uh, Wolverine and Deadpool fashion there. Hmm. And then we've got. Number 25, we got uh, Deacon jumping into the fray. So you got Wolverine, Deadpool, and Deacon. And then if you guys don't mind, I actually have a little unboxing, which I know is X-related. Uh, Mr. Aiken sent me something. Sure. He said, Dive he said I know you. He, he got a, uh, a a run of Burn, go figure, Burn X-Men. <laughs> and... Um, he said, I got a couple issues that you need for your for your run. Let's send them your way. And um, it was funny because he was telling me he thought that um, he thinks that I have a lot better collection than I actually do. I said, no, you know, I just show all the highlights all the time. <laughs> There's it's a lot of big holes in my collection. So let's see if I can get them out here. Yeah. Oh, you got them all taped in a cube. Let's see here. All, all two of them taped in a cube. Oh. Rider 95, you wrote Mark Texera. Mark Texera? Yeah, he, um, he did a run of Wolverine that was so good. Um, uh, he wasn't point. kidding. He told me they were in great shape, too, and uh, he wasn't kidding. Uh, so we got uh, X-Men 121. Mm, nice. Awesome. And X-Men 120. The last issue that I think goes to. I think I'm pretty close to having it complete now other than a 94 and a GSX. So, uh, nice. honestly, I have to go back and recount. Awesome. Yeah. So thank well, you well, so well. much, Mr. Akins. I mean, I'm I'm not surprised because he told me which ones were coming, but <laughs> they are beautiful copies. So thank you so much for sending them to me. And um, wow. Excellent yeah. books. Awesome. Mr. Well, Aiken. thank you. You guys can take the camera off. <laughs> All right. Who's up next? I can go. All right. So, you know, we're all showing, we're, we're showing them off. <laughs> and of course, you, you, you know you got to have the John Buscema uh, first. Oh yes, first catch. nice. Um, just love it. It's a sharp uh, copy too. Yeah, I mean, so sharp. So yeah, and then and then this classic cover, of course, their first uh, meeting and battle. Um, not the best art, but the cool imagery. And you know, of course, we looked at this. This is just. Just classic, and let, let's hope um, we get this iteration of Hulk in the movie. Um, so what's cool about this one, uh, you know, where the whole uh, desert Mad Max Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, and there's a lot of rumors of, of who might be in there. But one of the biggest ones, and it's confirmed, is that this guy, Sabretooth, first appearance of Sabretooth here, I actually just updated <laughs> – I got a near mint copy. I had a really trashy copy. And uh, one of my 2024 collecting goals is to um, upgrade my collection. So I was able to get this from his and hers, Nishan, 
And uh, there's a little staple issue, but I think it's uh, um, manufacturing. But this is like a near mint nine six nine eight. You just got it, right? I saw you just got, got it, it just the other day. Yeah. 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 I was wondering so, if that went. It was you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got my, I'm, my ball on that first saber tooth. But I just love this cover. It's so great. You oh, get yeah. the, the the ferocity. I love that the cover. Right I off the bat. I love that cover. Uh, it's such a great cover. Mike, do you have that book? Yeah. Top corner, yep. I got it, that. Uh, it's, it's pretty clear that that's Cassandra Nova. They they you know cast a gal. Um, and this isn't uh, her first appearance, but this is this great um, – Frank quietly drawn, uh, the Grant Morrison written, Frank quietly drawn uh, comic where there's no, there's no dialogue. It's all imagery. It's Gene goes into the mind of, um, I don't know if it's Cassandra Nova or Professor X and finds, finds out the origin story of how Cassandra Nova tried to um, choke out Xavier in the womb with his umbilical cord. Uh, and then Xavier just like, destroyed her and integrated her into his his, his own consciousness uh in utero um and it's just the trippiest book if you Holy haven't God. read this new new uh new x-men um yeah. go read it enough That's said cool. only in comics it's like one of the yeah. weirdest villain origin stories ever but super yeah. cool yeah, she's so dark and what she does right from the start, like destroying Genosha. And if you haven't read that arc, the Grant Morrison arc of New X-Men is just... Mwah! Um, and, and, and Pyro shows up. So this isn't his origin, but uh, in recent times, the Kirkoa era, they did uh, Marauders. I um, loved him on Marauders. Yeah, he's great. Like he gets, you know, he gets resurrected in the queue and he tattoos his face. He gets that face tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> a big skull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skull, I, I actually read that one. That was right at the beginning of. Uh, did did they establish that he was a like romance, like trashy romance novel writer? Yes. In that run. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's such a great run with like Kitty Pride as this like lush, swashbuckling um, captain of the Marauders because she can't enter Krakoa, so she's got to do something else. But I just, I love the juxtaposition of this cover of like, you know, the elementals of like Omega levels here, um, you know, fire and ice. Um, but Marauders, it was a, it was a, it started out pretty good in my opinion, it kind of tapered off like a lot of the stuff, um, in Krakoa era. Um, what Mike mentioned earlier, uh, the Wolverine, how uh, how Sabretooth keeps visiting a Wolverine on his birthday. And this is the issue that just came out where he comes and it's, yeah. if you haven't read it, it's so brutal. And I feel like it's a kind of good hopping on point for people who haven't read Wolverine in a while. Um, potentially. I don't know. But uh, those are the if books. If you like gore, there's a heavy, heavy uh, disclaimer with that one. It's hyper violent. Even for our comic book. Nice. <laughs> All right. Chris. Yes, sir. I gotta show what get the bell ready. <laughs> this one I um upgrade. Man. I I got this upgraded to uh in last month. Nice. Nice. That's cool. Um, these two just came in from, it was perfect timing with CGC. I'm selling these, but still I was happy about them. Yeah. That one. And then, um, one of my favorites, I'm a big Alex Ross stan. So, you know, nice. uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Wolverine, just beautiful. All those timeless heroes are just gorgeous, you know? So that's good timing to get those in this week. And then some of my um, – I I went, like, real nuts last year, and I realized, like, I don't have all the Wolverines I want. So I just kind of collected a bunch of Wolverine covers I love. Oh, that's cool. I like oh, that one. 145, kind of underrated. It's got the foil there. There's one that doesn't have the foil, but I think that's a great cover. That's where he gets his metal back on his, his bones. Yeah. And then, um, obviously, Jim – you got to have the Jim Lee covers, you know, the, um, just burn. 
That's a nice cover too. Cover. I, I got I got a, a a love for those plain colored backgrounds, like the like the um, Wolverine um, mix Mister Fix It or the Patch Mister Fix It one. That, yeah, like, there's something move. just so cool about just that that era, and then just like a really good color background, plain. One of my favorites in my PC. Sorry, nice. I got Sorry, him. I got one. I got a picture of Claremont signing it. Um, and then last August, I got to meet uh, Frank Miller, and um, he he signed it right right in his head there. Oh, that's awesome. So that was cool. But he didn't want any pictures because he's yeah. getting older. So, um, and then there's this one, you know, that I kind of wanted to bring up because, you know, obviously the first first meeting of Deadpool and Wolverine is uh, this issue, right? Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of people who say that it's in this Toys R Us issue. Do you guys know that? Huh. Yeah, they say that that's their first meeting. It's not. And people, if you go on eBay, they sell it as that, that it's Deadpool Wolverine's first meeting. Hmm. Um, Deadpool's in it, but they never interact in the issue because I oh. took the time to read well, that. So is it the first time they're in a comic at the same time? That could be. That could very well be. They don't interact. But, but yeah, maybe it's... Um, it's a choice of words is what yeah. it is for the sales. So depend on some people get trapped with that, but I, I just brought this out one other time, but not to some of you. This is one. Of oh my yeah. That's killing me, Chris. That's one on my and list. That, <laughs> that, and that one is a, is a good man, um, a good link to the Deadpool. And we'll, yeah, bring exactly. We're going to reenact that. And then Eric, um, I, Eric, I have a beat up copy of that. I could send you if you'd like. <laughs> you guys ever seen this one? Oh, I man, I look at that one every week at my local store. The Global Jeopardy, Wolverine, Kazar, Shannon, they save the animals. Nice. Collaboration I, love, I love those one-off one-shots that Marvel did for, like, that and Heroes for Hope and I – mean, those I don't know what it is about those books, those particular type of books that I just I like. And then we got a I didn't see this one yet. Maybe no. this will happen again. Again. <laughs> so there's some. Maybe they get it right the second time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I got a little bit of stuff that's been shown, and a few that haven't. Mm. I love that. One of my favorite oh, yeah. all time Wolverine covers. And then here's my what? A, oh no, not that one. And then I think this is my oh, oh absolute yes. favorite Wolverine cover. I'm trying to find the best light. There you go. That's that's like Jim Lee at his finest, right yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. So dynamic. I absolutely love that book. Uh, and then, yeah, just since we saw him in, in the trailer, I had to bring Patch. And then I don't have a lot of Deadpool stuff, but I did find this one, which was cool. Oh, that's cool. Very oh, cool. Okay. 99. Meaty, meaty Deadpool. Yeah, <laughs> thick one. Yeah, he's thick boy on that. Oh, it was ninety nine, so thick yeah. book thick. He, he got everybody got swole in the nineties. Yeah, he's swole <laughs> up. <laughs> Gotta love that nineties. <laughs> <Steroid. laughs> uh, and then I got this. I love this one. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Fastball. fastball special. I, I'm pretty sure this is the first time fastball special was uh, featured on a on a cover. Um, on a cover. Right. On a cover, on a cover. Uh, if anybody knows of any of a different one that came before, please let me know because I want. The There's a newer one, one for you. Special cover. <laughs> I think my favorite fastball special is the um, the Joss Whedon run when Colossus comes back from the dead. Oh yeah, I love that. That's yeah, and he one. tosses them and you know, uh, full panel. Fastball special. It's great. Ryan, can I ask you real quick? Do you like the way Klaus is drawn nowadays? I know he's a classic look, but I love the way they draw Klaus. He looks like more like a real person now. I just I just love it. I love how everyone gives him a beard and gives different hairstyles. Yeah, I, I, I think I mean like I'm not like super into the new stuff uh yet, but 
from what I see. I always like I like Colossus big. I don't like when he's I mean he's less big when he first came out, but I like kind of the more modern where he's big, but he still doesn't look too too big. Uh, but yeah, I like him. I like him with the beard. I think the beard's kind of a nice. But they're still doing him wrong. <laughs> he just they throw him under the bus so much. I feel so bad for him. Yeah, uh, this is he's been thrown under the bus his whole existence. Yeah. I feel he's <laughs> never given the respect. He uh, all right, and then this is my last one. Very cool. Really, oh, really nice. This is such a great, yeah. great story, and um. I love this is definitely my favorite cover from that from that series. I just reread that whole series because I was going through and changing some bags out and cleaning it up and stuff. And I was like, oh, you know what? I haven't read this in like 20 years. I'm gonna read it again. That whole Shadow Cat arc is kind of coming back around. Yeah, with her being the ninja again. Yeah. Thanks, Austin Post. That's pretty cool. And yes, this is an X-Men group. <laughs> Welcome to uh yeah, the the comic YouTube space and comic community, Austin. And uh thanks for watching. We're we're a relatively new group, although you know, we've known each other a little longer than than the the this Council of X, but this is only our second episode, but hope you'll uh continue to watch us. We uh we're trying to get together every other week. Talk X Men. We're a bunch of X Men collectors and X Men nerds, and uh, yeah, thank you for uh, thank you for for stopping in and watching. And let us know, you know, drop us uh, a line if you have any questions on, on anything. And everybody's always help ha happy to help help out uh, new collectors, give them advice or whatever from our limited humble knowledge. <laughs> so. Um, I don't know if we want to get into it or not. I mean, how? Let me know how you guys are feeling. Uh, but I really liked that uh, that topic that uh, you uh, had mentioned in our chat, Mike, which was recommend. And maybe this is a good time since we have a new uh, a new collector, new comic community member in the chat. But um, Mike, you posted uh, or gave, sent us a little link. But it basically just uh, posed the question. I'm just pulling it up so I can read it verbatim. What vintage X-Men comics should every Marvel fan read at least once? Mm. Awesome. Yeah, so I saw that article. And although I don't necessarily agree with all the ones they put in there and the order they had it in, I thought it was a great discussion. You know, we've talked about what our favorite stories are. But yeah, Austin, timely to show up and say you're a new collector because people ask all of us. I think we all get this question like, hey, I'm new to comics. What should I read? And I know the lazy answer is whatever you like. Um, but I think it's also a lazy question, right? Because I think people are like, well, <laughs> I have no idea what to collect. Tell me what to collect. It depends. It does depend on what you like. It's different if you say, what do you like, right? If I would have someone say, what are you collecting right now? And why do you collect? I think it's a better question. So as an X-Men lover, if someone asked me, what are my favorites? I could answer that a lot easier than telling you what you would like. And so when I see an article like that, what do you think is essential reading? I thought that was great for all of us because that's a personal question for each of us. We're all going to have a different version of that. There are now, there are a couple stories I think we're all going to say. Yeah. I'll just throw it out there right now and get them out of the way. Um, for me, obviously, um, Days of Future Past actually is my favorite X Men storyline simply because it's two issues, right? It's an almost standalone. You know what I mean? It's the shortest you can have a multi book story, but I think it's easily one of the best ever. It's fantastic. Dark Phoenix Saga, a little bit harder to jump into on the first time. I think it's required reading if you love the X-Men, but I think it actually is a tough book and storyline. There you go. Thank you, Eric. Uh, to get into, because there's a lot going on. It is a soap opera. It's a space epic, and there's a lot of stuff before that leading into it. Arguably, the Dark Phoenix Saga starts, you know, 30 issues before, right? Down at like yeah. 100 and 101. So I think it's a little bit less accessible, but I think for X-Men readers, that's up there. Um, uh, there are a couple of ones on the list um, that I thought were great. I wouldn't have thought of. Uh, uh, God Loves Man Kills, uh, which is perfect. is an absolutely perfect one shot you can get. Um, it's a graphic novel, not a comic book itself, but that's fantastic. And I would put those three very close to the top of the list of required or essential X-Men reading. 
But I think if you're gonna pick one, Austin, if you want to start, try to get uh, X Men one forty and one forty. Sorry, one forty one and one forty two, which is Days of Future Past. Absolutely I, awesome. I think they just reprinted those too, so you can get them for fairly good price. You know, cover there price. Yep, absolutely right. Yeah, I do see those reprints all the time. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, and a yep. good follow up to uh, to that. Um, I'm not saying it's the greatest stories or 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 comics, but if you really loved the the Days of Future Past um, two two issue story, which is great, it's a great thing to 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 read if you're not like looking to read the whole run because it's a pretty self contained story within the two issues. But you can also pick up most uh, just recently Days of Future Past Doomsday, which was a four issue follow up uh, to that that original uh days of future past story which basically just fill, fills in the story of how how did that apocalyptic future uh of the world and for mutant kind come to exi- come to be so it, it just basically it's all the 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 domino effect of 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 moments that lead to that uh that future that they're trying to 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 stop in the original story and it's just full it's full of characters dying your favorite characters dying it's it's a brutal it's a brutal story but really cool and fills in a lot of um interesting questions and holes that you might have uh wondered reading the the original um days of future past for me uh i read i read that i thought that there was it was there was some weak parts in it like yeah, I, like I said, it wasn't Spider-Man like the greatest the death by an angry mob. I was like, that that Spider Man would not let himself get beaten to death by an angry mob. He'd flip his way out of there. I mean, and I'm like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I love all those dystopian futures, though those alternate <laughs> universes that that show you what the the full extent of like humans' hate can bring uh, and fear. Uh, and how it can play out gives you a sense of like everything, but like, yeah, my, like I was going to say uh, the, um, you know, God loves man kills arc really encapsulates um, like the fear we have as humans for things that are uncanny that aren't like us. Um, and uh, in, in more modern, th- I would also say like f- find your, your favorite writers and, um, mm-hmm. I started with like Jim Lee's run of X-Men early on. And that was my introduction. Right. And that could be a great introduction. Like the, the art and ambiance really kind of like, it's so nineties and it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, but in later iterations, Grant Morrison's new X-Men run uh, right off the bat, I think considering also that they're going to introduce Cassandra Nova, that might be an interesting launching point uh, to, to, to get the gravitas of, of that character, um, the weirdness of Grant Morrison and what he brings to just what it is to be a mutant and what the X gene is and and all of that, um, and uh, Joss Whedon's run of Astonishing X Men was real good, yeah, that was good for so yep. good. You talk about team building and like you know female led characters. Um, that's just it's such a great read. Um, that's where I would point you. Mm-hmm. That that astonishing run, I I can compare that to the Burn Claremont era. I mean, it's it's very good. Yeah, high praise indeed. Yeah. And then, as far as like single issues, you know, you can't go wrong with Giant Size X Men One. Like, yeah, absolutely, just an absolute intro to the to I think the best era of X Men ever, and it's a nice longer issue. It's a thick kind of annual style issue, so you get a really great beefy story out of it. Um, very good issue. Yeah. Wolverine, Have you read uh, uh, Deadly Florida. Genesis, Ryan? Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. The the retelling of that story where there was a oh I, I, I haven't story. read it I've heard I've heard it I've heard awesome. about it yeah it's really Texas. good yeah the Deadly original Genesis. team with um like uh Vulcan Darwin Vulcan, uh, Darwin Vulcan yeah yeah yeah, yeah. very good story, that makes Professor X look not so good <laughs> yeah there's that's been a actually, lot of I think, things that make him not look not right. so good. 
<laughs> that was the beginning. I feel like the biggest crack in the armor. He's never been good. It's always been shady stuff. But for me, that was it was that one. That's the one where like, oh, Professor X is awful, and he's been awful ever since for me. <laughs> like he's he's never he's never been redeemed ever since uh, I read Deadly Genesis, and uh, I think he's better that way, honestly. Yeah, and weirdly enough, Magneto has been so redeemed. Uh, That's great. Yeah, when he died recently, I was like, oh man, Magneto. Um. But I, I just love I, I guess that brings me to this thing of like um there's a rumor that they're going to not have Magneto in the first X-Men like feature film that they do, and it's gonna be female led centric. And a part of me is just like, why why alienate the fan base and say like it's gonna be female red uh led when we all know that like X-Men have the best female characters already established. Um, and you can just do that and, and have it be amazing. Why make that a point of emphasis? And the other thing is, like, you, you have to have Magneto and Xavier uh, to set the tone for the history of mutants and just, like, the two of opposing viewpoints. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know how they're going to work around that, trying to do something new. Um, That's clickbait. That's not Marvel saying, hey, we're coming out with a female-led storyline or – it's it's people scoopers that go. I'm gonna get a lot of traffic at, from people hating this if I phrase it this way. Right, and that's where I think it come that stuff comes from. That's well said. I think I like honestly. I doubt there. I I think they'll probably just it. It'll just be strong female characters, which they always have, and it won't really feel that way. It'll just feel like X Men. And uh, and the X Men have that, always had strong female characters. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the best part it's of that just framing it that way that gets you know people rattled. Right, I agree. Like, like when they're saying they're going to change it from X Men to X People, <laughs> yeah, gonna, or just the mutants or whatever is dumb. Yeah, yeah. Rob said, "Butte I mean, Massacre." Me Masker, I love yeah. that idea because not only is it X Men books or the early two hundreds, right, or two tens around there, it yeah. also crosses into other X books, right? So you get some X Factor in there, um, which I like. So again, if you're getting into X Men reading, I think it's important that we mention some of those other X Men uh, tangential um, or parallel different you know titles. And, and I really like the fact that I, I put it on a lesser tier, but the whole thing um, with like the Madeline Pryor storyline. Uh, what's that called? Steve McGreen, Inferno. Right? Inferno. Thank you, Inferno. It crossed all of the X titles, which I actually thought was wicked cool as a kid. I like the fact you yeah. read about all of them. It's not the greatest storyline, but uh, it's still pretty neat. Especially yeah, yeah it was Mutant Massacre into Fall, Fall of the Mutants into Inferno, and they were right. all crossing into extinction more than even just more than even just x-men titles like uh, i i mutant massacre crosses into like thor right. thor yeah. ends up saving angel in the in the in the the sewers um mm -hmm. yeah it's uh that's a really really cool story and you're getting the dark side like it's you know like in star trek next generation you have the enterprise is like the flagship of the federation but you're not seeing the dark side like you got the beautiful mutants on the X-Men, but the Morlocks are like, you know, deformed, actually mutated. You know, they had their powers too. So you're seeing the full extent of like the mutation uh, play out. Um, right. The yeah. one thing with the X-Men that's always bothered me, I think I told you guys this before, it's like all, all the superheroes are gorgeous, right? But like the X-Men are stupid pretty considering they are mutated human beings you know i've always this it's like you can only be on the starting roster if you're like gloriously beautiful other um, than beast, but even beast taller, like oh he's but he's still gorgeous like he's like yeah. perfect. <laughs> same with beast right like beast is a beast but he's like a pretty good looking beast he's like the handsomest beast ever exactly yeah that was, like grand like, Morrison. Yeah. that's why the grant morrison run when they introduced the school mm. i like the same reason you get the really weird kids who have like beak and stuff you know like that makes more sense to me. You have, you know, stupid mutation. Yes, amazing X Men. Love that storyline. Or your Kurt Wagner. <laughs> Love Kurt. Love Kurt. So, yeah. So basically, Austin, just read everything X Men. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we can just keep going yeah. on. Yeah. 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 Seem to like give you a short list here. Yeah. Um, hopefully, you wrote all that down. Yeah. Well, that's You're probably that's better off um, asking someone who's a like a minor X Men fan because they probably only just picked 
pick and choose and they can like give you like we'll just like list everything that's when you go and you get the omnis right so then you don't have to really hunt for the individual issues you just get them all in one big book that's what i did that's what i did i get them for books that i already own because i don't want to take them out yeah, I, can't yeah. Books. I have I volume them. one and two of the yeah. You know the '60s run because and yeah. my son, like I have all the Chris Claremont ones in like this, like you know ten issues at a time. The you know the soft paperbacks, they're great for my son because he'll just read them in bed. He can enjoy the same stories I did and not have to worry about them ruining a comic book. You know, and he loves yeah. them. He loves reading them that way. Speaking of Omnibus, they just announced that they're uh, reprinting or doing a new Extinction Agenda um, Omnibus coming out later this year. <laughs> Which is good because I need that one to fill in some gaps in between the the Jim Lee omnibus that I that I'm currently getting into now. So nice, that cool. Anyone else have recommendations for sort of really good X Men stories that you think we should be? I uh, think one the one that I thought of was brought up in the comments the uh, the Brood saga when we kind of <laughs> first get to see the new X Men go into space. We yeah. see the star jammers and all that stuff. That was cool. Well, that was my well, jam. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead, Ryan. Oh, I was just gonna say, like star jammers. You hear you you uh, get introduced early, Claremont. Uh, but then, yeah, then you, then they go back to space with with yeah. the brood saga. It's X Men in space. It, it is. They can they they wouldn't be able to launch with X Men in space uh, storylines for for movies, but man, would it be awesome if they could they they eventually ended up in in space dealing with one of those storylines. Looks like they might be. <laughs> so much. When I was a kid, it was Jim Lee's nine you you know um, X Men run and Uncanny, but adjacent to that, I would read the X Men classics, and the first one I ever picked up was like. The, the second brood in space arc. Um, and it's these classic X-Men covers with like Mike Magnolia covers that are just so amazing. So that was my introduction to like older X-Men mm -hmm. picked up right there in space with like Wolverine on an alien planet and um, yep. trying to survive. And um, I love cosmic X-Men and I would love I feel like, okay, how do you showcase the power sets, right? Because you have all these X-Men that are OP, you know, Omega level. You got to have them go against, the like, the brood. I would love to see their power showcased. Um, she she are uh, Imperial Guard, man. I want to see an X-Men. Oh, yeah. Guard. Guardian. Oh, yeah. Oh. Man, so good. He's so good. Gladiator. Yeah. I mean, if they did, if they did Dark Phoenix right, or... Uh, um, yeah, Darfinus, they they could they could have that, right? But they can't go straight to space. They, you got to work up to no, that. No, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, but that'd be cool. And they've done Dark Phoenix already a few times, and it's not not gone. But, yeah, so like like not space for you. And and speaking of vintage issues that are worth reading, I mean, it's great to read the whole story. But if you're gonna pick one out, that's a great issue when they when they're uh, fighting on uh, the. The, is it, it's the moon, right? The moon, yeah. Yeah, the, the blue side of the moon. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. All of the Dark Phoenix saga, all of Claremont, really, but all the Dark Phoenix saga is very wordy. There's a lot of story jammed in each one. That one, that book, is wordy. This whole page is where you oh. can barely see the art. It's it's it's, it's right there. Deep. Double sized. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that so many words. <laughs> uh, Austin asks. Is there a Facebook group or social media space to follow all X Men stuff? I'm sure there is. There's a couple, I think, out there. I mean, you could follow all of us, but I mean, we're not going to give you, uh, you know, just X Men. You know, it's a little bit of mixed bag. Just show on, you on Facebook. There's a bunch of groups um, that's like X Men collectors, right? And you just mm -hmm. you know, you click on one, you or you know, so you subscribe to the page on one it'll connect you to a whole bunch of other ones and not only will they go back but they'll also like do teasers for upcoming stuff that's current and and all that so if you go and you look it's all out there yeah i i i, I don't really have like a one-stop shop hub for everything x-men like i just kind of consume x-men all over the place um 
here's a good here, here's a really good um place to go is uh follow john's comics with kids and i was just thinking that <laughs> from no good from no good comics who plug i'm having on the channel on thursday for an x-men uh collector chat they have an ongoing series called omni x-men and they do a show every tuesday night alternating between their two channels where they go over an issue of x-men from uh from their omnibuses uh so they started with uh the first claremont era uh uncanny x-men volume one and they're already on uh, volume four now so if you wanted to go back and like consume their sh their shows or just uh you know pick and choose different episodes different books and issues uh they don't like read it they just kind of talk about the issue and they always have a guest on their channel every uh every week uh and it's a great show um so that's a good that's a good starting point um for some comprehensive x-men stuff and then uh yeah just uh it's kind of just from there just pick and choose there's lots of lots of channels out there that cover x-men and talk about x-men comics or you know buying or whatever you want to learn about uh when it comes to x-men All right. Well, with uh, that said, we're almost on two hours. Any last uh, thoughts, words, comments from the council before we wrap up? I just like to say that um, I love and appreciate this community, and and uh, you know, winter time is usually a pretty tough time for me. This particular winter, being back to school and uh, the things in my life has been tough, and. And uh, I'm not afraid to reach out when I need help and support. And I encourage anyone who's with us watching this that if you're having a hard time, you have a community. And there are people that, um, that you know, that love you and care for you and, and uh, can boost you up. And, and th this group here, this council has been a, a big help to me. And, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just so grateful to, uh, to be able to fucking geek out X-Men. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well we're happy to have you man and uh that's a great thing to say and it, it's definitely true you know just uh reach out to to people in the community it's an awesome community uh not just sex men but like anything comics it, it's just like very uh welcoming and uh and caring and good people and lots of good vibes all around so uh yeah we're uh we're excited to keep going with Council of X. I think uh, we're going to be on, let me just double check my calendar, aiming for Friday. Next trailer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I think next Friday, actually, uh, the 23rd. Um, but uh, I'll post the show and once we, we nail it down. Um, but... Uh, before we go, does anybody want to plug anything? Anything upcoming on their channels? Anything at all? Well, uh, I had well, my video came out today. Um, I got um, a whole bunch of X Men books, uh, including that Excalibur run. Uh, the next video after that, I, oh, I didn't have time to show you guys this. I got a mystery box, fifty comic books for twelve dollars. Usually bad stuff, but it's almost all X Men books. Ooh, so nice. I have a lot wow. of them, but there's a whole bunch of stuff in the late 90s, which is like a dark period of my collecting. Uh, all sorts of goodies in here. I was actually looking through to see if I saw any of those Deadpool Wolverine ones you guys had. Uh, these are all reader copies. I'm excited just to go through them. Me and my son bought them together just to read them, and there's some pretty cool stuff in here. So uh, I have that's a video fun. coming out, I don't know, next time, where I can show off some of these books in more detail. So, yeah. That's check great. it out. I talk about X-Men way too much on my channel, but other stuff as well. So, yeah. Check it out. Cool. I have a uh, another fun video coming out later in the week with my wife. Uh, nice, putting her through the paces of the who's who and you know Marvel guidebook. So, mm -hmm. should be fun. <laughs> awesome, Brian. Anything? I, uh, I would. I would encourage everybody to check out our our friend uh, Ricky. All sorts of words. He's got a great thing going on. Yeah. The uh, great, comic yeah, great collecting point. clash of champions. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. Let's uh, uh, plug him for sure. Yeah, he's he's serious. I actually actually post the his link in the chat, but uh, he uh, he has a thing. It's a kind of a wrestling thing where folks 
show books in a challenge, then you fans get to vote on which ones were the best books shown. And uh, my, uh, you know, spoiler, my my character makes an appearance at the end of the newest episode. So, mm. <laughs> so that's all sorts of words here on YouTube, and the videos. Uh, you can check out past episodes. It's only the third week of 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 this, and this is a weekly matchup style wrestling style. It's called Four C. Is that what he calls it? Four C. Comic book clash of champion or. I'm a collecting I'm clash of collect, collecting clash of champions c4 you'll you won't miss it on uh on all sorts of words here on youtube and uh i know ricky would appreciate the views the likes the comments the votes you can vote on his community page so you just go to his channel into the community tab and he usually runs five questions uh like yes no style uh or or a b style and you just pick one of each and uh that's basically voting on the comics for each round um, between the two in the matchup every week. So yeah. definitely check Mr. that out. It was hilarious. I mean, uh, he was yeah. off the did so good. Both of them did so good. Uh, it, was, yeah. it was a really good matchup this week. Lots of enthusiasm. If I give some high praise for Ricky, nobody makes me laugh more on YouTube oh. than Ricky from all sorts of words. He knows like, he, my sense of humor. It's right up my alley. Uh, I think he is a brilliant human being. I think we're lucky that he chooses to talk about comic books because I think he could talk about anything in the world and he would sound educated and intelligent and really funny. But I'm happy he picked comic books because I need a good laugh sometimes and he absolutely supplies it. So high praise yeah. for him indeed. He's awesome. So there's a comic book shout out. <laughs> I'm starting that up again. Hashtag. The hashtag comic book, book. book shout out is going to be starting up here again. Um, actually, a couple people have already made videos. Mike has done one, and Mr. Akins has done one. Um, and uh, so I'm going to be getting that going again. And we're going to be having some su some prizes, original artwork, all kinds of cool stuff for everybody. So my uh, partner in crime, Travis, will be helping me out with that. So uh, we'll be doing some yeah, and Travis, here. unfortunately. Travis couldn't be here tonight. He's a he's a member of the council. I have everybody who's in the council, either what who is on tonight or not. Uh, all their links are listed in the description on on this. So Instagram and YouTube, um, and even Chris on Etsy. I have his his uh, Etsy. Uh, you got some big books coming up on your sales. Yeah. So if you're if you want to buy comics, check out uh, Cheddar Comics on Etsy. And uh, yeah, and then like I said on Thursday, I've got the next episode of X Men Collector Chat with uh, John from John's Comics with Kids and Justin from No Good Comics, and of course Dan from Dan's X Men Comics, who's my co-host. Going to be a great episode. That's airing at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, and then on my channel i'll you know i have videos coming on every once in a while um i have a couple in the queue so that'll that'll be coming in the next uh week week or week and a half so stay tuned for that and uh i think that's it for this second session of the council of x i hereby declare this <laughs> session closed thank you for joining us tonight everyone uh, and uh, have a great rest of your week. Hope to see you on Thursday for X-Men Collector Chat and our next episode, our next meeting of the Council of X. Take care. Thanks, guys. Take care, guys.